We are going to be fabricating a long arm orthosis. So first we're going to start with the pattern. We are going to measure for the pattern, but you can also draw the pattern. So we're going to take our measuring tape and we're going to start just distal to the axilla to the electron process. And that is seven inches. And then starting from the electron process to the distal palmar crease, because we will be crossing the wrist. And that is 11 and a half. And then as for width, we want to do about half the circumference of the arm. So this is the pattern once on the material. So as for the length, my length was about seven inches on the upper arm and then 11 and a half on um, the forearm and hand. And then I drew in the metal carpal bar here because we will be crossing the wrist. And then as for width, it's about half the circumference of the arm. Prior to fabrication, since this does cross the elbow and the wrist, you want to pad the bony prominences. So we're going to pad the lecanon process, the medial and lateral epicondyles, and the ulnar head. Once your material is ready, you can begin fabrication. So if the patient is able, you want to position them in supine just to allow gravity to assist you with fabrication. So the elbow is going to be in about 90 degrees of flexion, wrist in neutral, and then forearm we're going to keep in neutral, but you can um, position the forearm any direction that you need. And then we're going to create our seams around the elbow. I'm going to push those down. And then now just making sure that you get a good mold around all the bony prominences. And then for the metacarpal bar, I went and tagged it on the dorsal aspect of the hand just to assist me with the fabrication. And if you have time during your fabrication, you are welcome to roll um, the orthosis at the distal palmar crease and around the thenar eminence. Once the material has cooled, you can mark it for trimming. So the upper aspect of the orthosis is a little long, so I am going to trim that just to clear the axillary. And then we're going to trim just proximal to the metacarpal heads. And then on the volar aspect of the hand, um, it is a little bit long, um, so I'm going to trim that at the distal palmar crease. And another area to watch for is around the thenar eminence, so you do wanna trim that if it doesn't clear that as well. This is the orthosis after trimming. So again, I trimmed on the proximal and distal aspect of the orthosis. I smoothed all my edges and then made sure my seams around the elbow were secure. For Velcro placement, we're gonna have one strap around the upper arm, a crisscross strap on the volar elbow, a strap on the wrist, and then one on the dorsal aspect of the hand. Here's the final product of the orthosis. So we're going to don the orthosis. And then we're gonna start up on the proximal aspect of the arm. We're gonna start with the strap around the upper arm and then the crisscross strap on the elbow, we're gonna go proximal to distal and then distal to proximal. And then one strap around the wrist, one strap around the dorsal aspect of the hand. Common irritation areas are at the axilla, so you wanna make sure they can perform full shoulder range of motion with no irritation. Also, the bony prominences around the elbow and the wrist. Um, so you can pad those areas as well. And then make sure they can perform full finger flexion and extension with no irritation and full thumb opposition.